How about those three people in the back? Can they come up front? Oh, can you guys come to the front, please? Sit there and let them have that role. This is, it's three of you guys, right? And uh, can you come closer to the front? That way we can fill it in in the back. Who is that man in the shades and the hat? Doesn't he look like he's here to rob or something? It's me. <laughs> he's like, is he like one of Hillary Clinton people? He looks like a spy. He works for Trump. He look. Oh, that's for that's for Romney. Go ahead. I think that's it, right? Yeah. Okay, and no food and drinks allowed in the in this area. Thanks. Thanks, Esteban. Hi. How are you? So, Ed, were you cursing early in the lobby? Yes, I was. You're not supposed to. Yeah, you too, you're too old for that. Robert told me he was going to tell you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, he didn't have to tell me. We heard it all the way in the back. Did you really? Yeah. Even better. Even, even more reason not to. Yeah. Did you apologize to the ladies? I did not. Sorry, ladies. Good morning. Welcome to church. I am Jesse Peterson. Thank you for being with me. Uh, if you have questions and comments, you can go to our comment session on YouTube and I can respond to them. All right. Amazing. So good morning, everybody. Again, thank you all for showing up. It was, uh, I'm glad you're here. I, um, so I'm back from the uh, Arizona. This week we were in Arizona from Thursday night until yesterday, yesterday evening. Uh, I was speaking at, uh, what's the name of the church? Arizona Christian University. Arizona Christian Glendale. University. Right. In Glendale, Arizona. And it was interesting, very much. So all you who showed up yesterday, thank you for coming. I absolutely appreciate it. A whole bunch of folks showed up. And that was good for my radio show. Also, uh, interesting things happened there. Before I arrived, there were the... Uh, the administration of the school there told me that there had been protesters who didn't want me there. And so they were calling, I can't believe you're having him. You know what he's about. Don't bring him. And it was, we were telling him what I was about. And they would say, oh, that's why we love him. <laughs> they want him here. So thank the administration for that. Um, I met some interesting people. I was talking to one young man there who said that he was married, he was married, and had either one or two kids, but definitely married with one or two kids. And he was saying that he had been listening to my show, and he heard me say that when you get married, to go far away from your parents and don't let them around. And he really believed that now because he's married, but his mother and grandfather, I believe, uh, had made him like a husband to them too and that it was difficult because she make him feel guilty if he doesn't take care of her and so he had to he bought a house somewhere he let his mother move in that house and now he is living with his wife mother waiting to buy, waiting to buy another home for them he and his family but he is so stressful he said it's so stressful that his hair is falling out uh, of his, you know, on his head. So he had a hat on. And I bring it up to say to the mothers that when your children become adults, they are no longer your children. And it's wickedness to follow them around and make them take care of you. To get involved with their family. Most of the time it's the mothers who are doing this and not the fathers. But in case the mothers are not holy enough to say no to that, and so this mother wouldn't even stop knowing that it was stressful on her son. The man trying to take care of his own family, he's not making a lot of money. You would think she would back off, but no, she's getting worse. So 
I told the young man, just tell her no more. Cut her off. Because you're not obligated to your parents. When they have you, when they're making a baby, they're not sitting around saying, oh, you know what, let's make a couple investments. Let's make a few babies so they can take care of us. Uh, and, and again, most of the mothers saw so it's evil to do that to your children. And, but when you become an adult, you're an adult. You're no longer your mother's child. So you can move away and just say no. And God is not against you. And a lot of that is happening to a lot of folks. And they're tripping out on it. Uh, what else? Uh, blah, blah, blah. It was a good trip. I'll talk about that some more on my radio show tomorrow morning. Um, I have a special announcement. It is an amazing announcement. Today is the 30th anniversary of Bond. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Mind blowing. And I want to say thanks to everybody because it's people like you who made it possible. And I do appreciate it. Uh, Francisco was there from day one. He was on the board and all that good stuff. He helped to make it happen. He, at one time, he was helping with the women's forums and the church service when I was out, and sometimes the men's forum. Uh, Kent was there from day one uh, of the men's forum and just really been a, a major help to the organization. He's a lawyer, so I never had to worry. <laughs> <laughs> because I was getting free law advice. And uh, who else here? Oh, Hermes. Been here for 20 years or so, right, Hermes? 18. Hermes used to run the Bond Chapel in Michigan, and uh, uh, less in Michigan. And then, uh, but when they had that crash where the black people wouldn't pay the bill, <laughs> remember when the blacks wouldn't pay for their houses, loans, oh. and we had a crash? We had to shut it down. Uh, so we have one in Flint and in Flint and uh, Lassen. So thank you all. We're going to be celebrating a major celebration in uh, September, right, Hermes? Yeah, September 26th. September 26th. So save your money, buy your tickets, get ready. It's going to be a hoot nanny. We're going to party. We're going to smoke pot. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the one time we're all going to get high. <laughs> I, um, I have to honestly tell you, I had no idea that it bond would turn out the way that it has. Because I didn't have a plan. I didn't know what to do. And I didn't care that I didn't know what to do. I just did what's in front of me. And it's just been amazing. We were known around the world. Been on most of the major radio and TV shows around the world. It's just been amazing. So thank you all very, very much. That's why I tell you that you don't need a five-year plan or a six-month plan. or You just need to do what's in front of you. And every day you see what to do to add on to what you've already done. I did not have a plan. I remember when I first started, I had a board of directors. And I didn't even want a board, to be honest. But I was told that I needed one in order to register with the IRS or something that's a nonprofit. So we had this board, and on that board was a lawyer, and he wrote up all of our stuff for the, to register. And, uh, and it wasn't Kent then. Kent was still a baby, I think. <laughs> you were in Africa somewhere, right, playing tennis? I was in Africa. Kent was in Africa playing tennis. He used to be a tennis pro. <laughs> and uh, he came back from Africa traumatized. Remember that? I do remember that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, How you were traumatized? The Africa or the trauma? The trauma. That or, or, or both. Both. Um, yeah, I, I went to Africa, uh, like Jesse's saying. I, I was playing tennis out there. And it was the first time I had been in a country where I was the minority, and, and, and significantly. And uh, I felt racism in a, in, a, in a reverse sense. Um, Ooh, now you know what we feel. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I was like absolutely traumatized when I came back and I randomly was uh, introduced to Jesse at one of their original offices in Inglewood and uh, I was like, wait a second, you introduced me to a black person, why would I want to be around really a black, black people? I ain't going there for no help. And, uh, but 
one thing that Jesse said that stuck with me a long time, and he was talking about cause and effect, and um, I'd never heard anybody talk about cause and effect before. And uh, at that time, I was seeking the truth, and uh, he asked everybody in this area, and it was all black people except for me, basically. I was the only white person. And he goes, who's a racist? And uh, <clears throat> I was thinking about it. I was like, wow, I don't know if I want to raise my hand right now. I'm in Inglewood. I might get shot. Um, oh. But I decided to be honest anyway. And I raised my hand, and nobody shot me, which was, I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. And I had your back. You did have my back. You back. Um, but I, what I learned I from that, that is. I you that my real son. <laughs> And my wife was white. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, go ahead. But I, I learned a valuable lesson is just be honest about everything. And, yeah. and don't hide who you are. Be real about it. And when people ask you questions, be sincere. And, and you can get over any, anything that you need to get over in your life. Yeah. So I appreciate it. And he that. started changing right away. It was amazing to see that. And uh, from that, he went on to law school and became a lawyer. Uh, what else? So it's just been amazing, folks. You don't need a plan. If you live in the present, you don't need a plan. But if you live outside of the present, you need a plan. And it's not going to work out that well for you. All right? So we're going to be celebrating in September. September. So save your money. Oh, it had been around forever, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just remember that. And what have you learned from Bond all these years? Oh, my gosh. So many things. Yeah. Maybe only one thing. What's that? Not how to curse that church. How to be a man. <laughs> how to be a man. Yeah, just, you know, and all yeah. the different facets of that. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of things in society work against that. Yeah. Um, uh, Especially the, today. The thing I've noticed most recently, although I've noticed it for years, but it seems to be very obvious now, is how everybody wants you to act emotionally attached to something. Yeah. Money, ladies, uh, whatever feeling you might, music. Movies, it's Oscar night tonight, right? So, I mean, the, the, movies are all about creating an emotional attachment. Yeah. You know, other, it's, it's just crazy how much of that in life there is. And it's, it's a constant struggle to, to see past it, at least for me. So. Amazing. You're going to be hearing more from along the years of the people. And it's going to be a good time. So make sure you save your money, get ready, and put on your red dress, ladies. We're going to have a ball. If the Lord is willing, then the creek don't rise. So thanks again for everything, all the supporters of Bond and just everybody. Thank you for that. Uh, before I get rolling, any questions about anything? Or anybody had a, a life this week, past week? Nobody had a life? Nothing happened this past week to anyone. Wow. You got married? Did you really? Amazing. That's you got good. him. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Well, we're going to have the ceremony later in huh? September 12th. We're going to have the actual, like, cer like ceremony and all that stuff. We just did so you went out to the courthouse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Get, like, paperwork and all that. Right on. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah. Now you can really curse him out. <laughs> <laughs> you got him. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's amazing. Any other, anybody else had a life? We have a brand new director of social media, and his name is, what's your name? <laughs> Chris. Oh, yeah, Chris. That's Chris. He's our director of what's social up? media now for Barn. What's up, everyone? A smart guy, really. He may have earrings on and hair may look funny, <laughs> but. Don't let it fool you. That's right. I'm so trying to be. Deceptive. I'm trying to keep everyone's, you know, eyes away. Oh, this guy's just weird looking. You know, right. he's not that smart. Cause some people saw you on the show when I was out this week. They're like, "Why would you have him? He doesn't look like a Christian." <laughs> right, right. I'm like, he's a punk rock Christian. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that all the time. Yeah. It's, they they don't think like I tell them like, oh yeah, I, I like Trump. I'm conservative. You know, I'm a Christian. They're like. No, there's no way. <laughs> I like having him look like that. I hope he stays that way. <laughs> that way it'll look like, wow, something. <laughs> but welcome aboard, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I've noticed that millennials are very, very 
talented, very talented. They know their stuff. It's just that the other half we were working on. So they become a whole. And uh, But Chris is really there already, really close to that. Uh, so welcome aboard. Um, any other questions or anything? That's amazing. So I don't want to be your preacher. We come here to fellowship, right? Who's here for the first time? Oh, good. Let's go right here. <laughs> and then I'll come to you. What's your Hi. name? My name's Tiffany. Tiffany, welcome. Oh, yes, yeah, How did you hear about us? Through my sister, Brittany. Oh, cool. Uh, thank you, Brittany. And uh, what's your impression? Have you seen any of my videos or anything? Yes, I watch you a lot. Oh, you do? And so when you saw it, first saw it, your thought was what? First thought? I thought that finally, I don't think I'm crazy because me and my family think the same as you. Oh, right on. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Yes. So how is life going for you now? Um, it's going great. I just try to live my life day by day, doing the right thing. And yeah, you definitely helped us. Did you go and forgive your mother? Did I forgive my mother? Yeah. Yes. You face your mother? Do I face her? Did you? Did you go and say, hey, I forgive you for trying to screw up my life? <laughs> I didn't say that exactly to her. <laughs> what did you say to her? Um, I guess in the past, when I've had problems with her, I have told her that I've forgiven her. But since you past. now understand the importance of forgiveness, have you gone to her forgiven her? No, not quite. Why mm -hmm. not? I haven't had the chance to. I'm sorry? I guess I haven't had the chance to really understand the depth of what, you're, of what you mean. Um, Maybe you can elaborate on, on it. When we were growing up, uh, we are traumatized by our parents. Uh -huh. Most of the time, the mothers. Not all the time, but sometimes beta fathers, you know. Yes. But the mother tend to do it because she's emotional. She lives out of her imagination. Mm -hmm. So they're very insecure. Mm -hmm. And they tend to turn the children away from the father toward them. Mm -hmm. And then they try to control the kids mm -hmm. and control the father. And then the kids resent that. And the moment you become angry at the mother, you become just like her. Because you become like what you, what you hate. And anger is hatred. Mm -hmm. and, but when you become an adult, you should realize that you get to know yourself. And you see what's driving you that causes you to do the things you don't want to do and prevent you from doing what you should be doing, right? Mm -hmm. That came from your mother by resenting her. And as you can't help yourself, it helped you to understand that she couldn't help herself. Then you go and forgive her. Don't ask for forgiveness. Just say, hey, I'm sorry for resenting you. I know now you can't help yourself. And God will forgive you. And then you will become you. You will no longer be like her. You will no longer act like her. Mm -hmm. uh, you will, if you want to help her out, you will. Mm -hmm. You will not let her live down the road from you and your husband mm -hmm. or in your same house yes. or anything because you would love her with the right kind of love and not the control love. So you have to go and forgive her so you can become yourself. I see. Um, my mom is, is very Christian, and she's kind of, I guess, repented for things, too. So Repeat, she kind she's of repent. She's Christian, I guess you could say. So she follows you as well. So my mom's not really that controlling type, although I think maybe she used to be. Yeah. So I guess telling that to her now kind of yeah. makes sense. It will but help. Did she apologize for doing that to you when you were younger, controlling you? Yeah. She apologized to you? She has, yes. Right on. She has. She's, she's changed. She, she would be here now, but she's with my little brother who has autism. So That's amazing that she yeah. apologized. Yeah. Because the hardest thing in the world for a woman to do is to apologize. Yeah, she's a great woman. She would send you to hell <laughs> yes. before she apologized. All in love. And then even when you go to her, well, hopefully your mother's on track. It's all like it. Mm -hmm. But most mothers would say, oh, okay. I accept your apology. And then they'll think about it. Mm -hmm. And the next morning they'll call you up. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean I did something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, right, that was your daddy. Well, if I can, maybe I can bring my mom next time. And yeah, but I'm glad if she's listening to me. She does listen she, to you. Because if she didn't want to do the right thing, she would not be listening to me. You know she what does. I mean? So yes. you're fortunate. And do you Thank love you. your father? Yes. Are you close to him? Yeah, but he sometimes acts like a beta. Uh, he beta! <laughs> do you call him beta? No, he wouldn't get what that means, but... 
He's yes, kind of emotional. <laughs> you said, Daddy, you a beta daddy. <laughs> you act like a woman. Sometimes he can. The best way to wake up a man is to tell him he act like a woman. <laughs> yes. I said to the audience in, uh, at the school, I said, any man that has anger is a woman. And then afterward, the preachers gathered me at a luncheon, and they're like, that's not true. I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> it is true. But so uh, have you forgiven your father? Mm, kind of, sometimes. I don't quite know. He kind of still acts irrational and emotional. But that's fine for him. But when you, how old are you? 25. Oh, once you forgive him, you don't have to worry about that anymore. It's up to him to overcome his own problems. Yeah. But you will be able to love your parents in the right way mm -hmm. and not feel guilty about anything. Yeah. So you see. should forgive your father because if you don't forgive your father, it's impossible to love God, to know God. You know about him, you read about him, but you won't know him mm -hmm. because it's impossible to hate your earthly father and say that you love your spiritual father. It doesn't work that way right. because the earthly father represents represent uh, the father, the spiritual father. I see. So you got to go and deal with him as well. I and don't do expect that. anything from him. Okay. Are you dating? Yes. You have a beta boyfriend, huh? No. No, he's beta. Why do you say that? He's just like your daddy. <laughs> People have said that in the past. See? <laughs> <laughs> and don't accept him being beta just to control him because you will resent it later in life. If you end up marrying him, you just hate him more mm -hmm. because he will become the boy and you will become the mama and you're gonna <laughs> hate that. You're gonna be his mama. Oh no. So you should be honest with him. Hey, you a beta, all right? I will. So that hopefully before you get married, he would have changed. And mm -hmm. if he doesn't change, it might not be the husband for you. Yes, that's... But be honest with him and just don't hate him. Okay. That makes sense? Yes, it makes sense. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Any questions for me? Uh, not at the moment. How about disagreements? No, I don't really consider my boyfriend too much of a beta, but I feel sometimes he can be emotional, but for the most part, he's An he emotional cry. boyfriend is a beta boyfriend. But he doesn't cry or, or get to, you know, I guess he tries to act. He will cry if you try to leave. <laughs> baby, come back. <laughs> Okay, Come that's back, the baby. test. So what? That's the test. Yeah. And so when you say sometimes he's emotional, I mean, a little emotional, right? A little, yeah. What does he get emotional about at times? His mom. What do you mean? I don't know. I just feel like he'll go out the way, he'll go out his way for her too much. Yeah. But not, he won't go out his way for you? Not as much. See, that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. So you need to be honest with him, all right? Mm -hmm. So that this can be worked out before marriage. Yes. If not, you're going to end in divorce. Yes, thank all you. All right? Okay. So be honest. If it's okay to be honest with a beta male, mm -hmm. just don't hate him. Okay. And that's what love is. Yes. All right. Thank you. I uh, mean, you're welcome. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that you are here, too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let me talk to your sister. Okay. Hi. Hi. What's your first name? Brittany. Brittany. So have you, um, how, you found us through your mother as well? Um, I think so, yeah. And any questions about anything? No. Have you forgiven your mother? Yes. You went to her? Yeah. And how did she deal with it? The same. She was sorry. You guys are fortunate. Believe yeah. me. You're very fortunate mm -hmm. that the mother admitted she was wrong. Yeah. yeah. She admits, it, I guess I was like more emotional back then. Yeah. And, um. She'll be like, oh, is it because of me? I'll be like, yeah, it is because of you. And I guess I hold more resentment towards her than she did. Right. So she told me she was really sorry and she really means it. So if I can get over it, then, you know, she can That's get over right. it too. Yeah. Right on. Well, forgive her and everything would be, your life would be as though you have a brand new life. It would be as though you don't have a past. Mm -hmm. All you have is now, and you're going to fly like a bird. Yeah. Are you married? No. Are you dating? No. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Any question? No. Oh, okay. If you do, let me know. Okay, well. Any disagreement about anything? No. Oh, good. All right. Right here. 
This is your first time, right? You've been here before? Yes. How about you? No. Your first time? Amazing. What's your name? Anna. Anna, welcome. How did you find out about us? Well, I watch you on TV, and then my daughter brought me here today. Oh, good. You're like, I don't want to go see that man. No, <laughs> I did, because I've been watching He's a you. Misogynist. I'm visiting from Arizona. Oh, from uh, Arizona? Yeah, I just moved there in November. Really? Yeah, I've lived here. What part here. of Arizona? Uh, Cottonwood, Arizona. It's near um, Sedona. How far is that from where I was? Glendale? I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, welcome. Any questions about anything? No. Anything that you disagree with? No. And did you apologize to your children for screwing them up? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> did you apologize to their father for driving them nuts? Well, I haven't talked to her father. You, you haven't talked to him yet? No. Will you? No, I haven't seen him for years. You don't know how to find him? Mm, no. Oh, you can find him. <laughs> you should find him and apologize for your weakness with him, for driving him away from the children and all that. And that may cause him to wake up. Well, I thought about it, but it's just so hard to communicate with. But I do blame myself a lot. When you say it's hard to communicate with him, what do you mean? Well, he's from Japan. You married a Japanese? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh. There's a daughter over here. <laughs> oh, see? You like rice? <laughs> <laughs> You married a Japanese? Yeah. You can find a white man? <laughs> I was so young, I, was, I wanted to get out of the house. Oh, <laughs> so you just married the first thing came along. And he was worse than my dad. He was what? Worse than my dad. Yeah. That's why you have to forgive. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I hope you can reach him. So your kids both are two different fathers? No. <laughs> is this your daughter here? Yeah. Oh, that's your friend. Oh, okay. You've been here before, friend? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so it's, it's hard to reach him now, huh? Yes. Why did you guys divorce? He was doing drugs. Smoking pot. Smoking pot with my son. He was smoking pot? Mm -hmm. That's not a reason to divorce. Well, at the time. I've dated many women smoke pot. <laughs> <laughs> we had the best time. <laughs> No, he was doing more than that. But, uh, and then he wasn't working either. Oh, no job. All right, yeah. I understand that. Depression. Yeah. Any questions about anything? No. If anything comes up, let me know. Okay. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. I'm Thank glad you. to be here. Right on. Thanks for coming. So, did you have your hand? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I just, I see what you say. Oh. I see what you're saying about uh, millennials, how they're very talented. Very, you, Nick um, is a millennial, right, Nick? No. You're 28. Yeah. You're <laughs> Smart. He and worked on his own Mr. car Wesley and everything. Is talented over there. Yeah. Um, talented people. Like, but I heard you say like we're like half talented, and then the other half is kind of. Is it more? Yeah. And then, and then I, I can also see like the zoomers, and weak. like the zoomer generation. And beta. And beta. And I've weak. never seen so many beta. <laughs> Not that Nick is beta. Oh what no. Nor is Chris. Yeah. But uh, how, what, uh, how the, I can see, like, the Zoomers now, like, uh, oh, they've taken over, like, the Internet culture. And they're, they're, I think they're even more talented than millennials, even. Oh, but, yeah? Um, like, maybe 75%. And we're, like, 50%. But what can you say about past generations? Were they, like, less talented than millennials? What happened was, I believe, that... You mean like my generation? Uh, the baby boomers. Am I a baby boomer? I don't know. Yeah. Am I? They gave up. But I, I heard black people can't be baby boomers. I think you said that. <laughs> oh, we can't? That's all we do, make babies. <laughs> <laughs> and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> We're baby boomers. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it seemed as though they gave up. And they've been ignored, that generation. And they are afraid to speak up now. I get that impression, especially with the white gener uh, generation. They are afraid to protect their children. They really are. 
and they go along with people who hate them, trying to get along. It's not working. And so over the years, it's just gotten worse. But I think they gave up. They became afraid. They didn't want to lose their stuff. Mm. OK. And I think that's what happened. And it's unfortunate, because had they stayed strong and passed that down to the next generation, the millennial generation would be amazing, because they would be one person. They would be morally yeah. right and wise and smart. I could see America would be on fire. It would be amazing. Yeah, like, like back in the 60s, kind of morality kind of like 69 like morality yeah kind of went, went out, out the window, window so okay yeah anybody else right here this your first time yeah, it's my oh okay i came in late actually the real first time i came here so oh okay after the introductions but it's what's good your to name be here on the 30th anniversary i guess Do what now it's good to be here for your, your uh, 30th uh, thank you man i appreciate I it up. are you from la no i'm from new york Oh, you're here visiting? I came out here uh, to see what was going on with Bond, so. Uh, right on. Checking it out, I guess. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm glad you came. Any questions or disagreements? Uh, not so much disagreements, but uh, just for the silent prayer. You know, I see myself not necessarily doing it like, you know, when I have a moment to actually be chill and calm, but uh, I guess whenever you get like a crazy thought in your mind or something that worries you, it's kind of just good to chop it out. I mean, does, does that count as a prayer? Does, do you even have to pray? Like, I don't know anything about religion or oh, I see. Christianity or anything like um, that. When you are uh, in a quiet moment yeah. and not lost in your imagination, you are with God. And when you're with him, no matter what the situation is, you have the faith without feeling it or thinking about it, and you will lack fear, and you can overcome that situation. Okay. And that's why in those moments, you should do it morning and night so you can become more, the real you can become aware of the not you. Okay. So when you're out there in the world doing your job or a monster, whatever, right? Yeah. You will be able to be still in a situation and you will see how to overcome it. Just stay out of every thought. The one thing I know for sure, if I don't know anything else, that all thoughts are lies all the time, all the time. And we are not allowed to have an opinion. We are not allowed to judge. We are to just to be. And when you just be and let things happen, it's amazing. Yeah. But you should always try to live in the present by staying away from those thoughts. Don't try to control them. Don't try to deny them. Don't fight with them. Just be aware, like looking at a movie. Just be aware of it, and that's it. Cool. Okay. And that's what prayer is. Nice. Because we don't know what to ask for. So when people are praying, like, oh, Lord, help my mama. Yeah, what do you ask? Help my daddy. Yeah. I want a wife. I want a husband. <laughs> they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. Because that's not what the need is. It's just they've been taught. Yeah. Yeah. And Satan is telling them that's what the need is. But it's not true. God loves us. He really loves us. And he will meet our needs beyond what we can even imagine. And it's better, and it's always perfect. So just be aware in, in the present. Okay. When people are yelling at you, do you date? Yeah, I, I have a girlfriend, yeah. Are you living with her? At the moment, yes. Oh, beta! What am I going to do? Beta yeah. in the house! Why are you living with her? We had a child together. Oh. Outside of wedlock. Oh. I didn't, Jesse, I didn't know about you. <laughs> I said. This is where we all supposed to go. Oh. <laughs> I understand, man. I went down the same road. And so a little boy or a girl? A little girl. You met your first child was a girl? I know, I know. First beta, child beta, girl. beta. I know, yeah. Mark, you better pray to your boy, Mark. Your first child better be a boy. Twin boys? Dang, yeah, that's right. Oh, I like to say, right on. But if it's a girl, take it back. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. So, so what's going to happen? Why haven't you already married her already? She's got extreme anger issues. Yeah. Extreme anger issues. And uh, I think it's beyond the norm. I tried to convince her. I drove her to the cemetery to at least talk to her mother and try to forgive her and get that out. You drove her to the cemetery to talk to her mother? Jesse, we were in the car one day, and she was going off. And I said, you know what? Just We're passing right by. Just go and deal with it. Talk to your mom. You know, get, get this was out of you. Was the mother there? I don't know. <laughs> Je I tell you what. I don't know. It's, I just said, hey, go. Do it. And you did know? she do it? She, she looked like she did. I don't know. She still has anger. That's all I know. You stopped at the cemetery 
She got out of the car and went and talked to her mama. Yeah. That's I, just, amazing. I loved her there. I drove yeah, you're away. Right. She's crazy. <laughs> and so did that help? I thought it would. It apparently is not. It's the oh. uh, same stuff. But you know you're making her worse by being weak, living with her without being married. Uh, well, would you marry a, like someone like that? Like, no. I, I forgave my parents. I don't. No. I can't see myself living with something like that. Especially that's why. Get better. That's why most people get married in that fallen state. Yeah. Because once you wake up, it's hard to get married because you see what you're about to get into. Yes. But in the fallen state, you don't see what you're getting into, and until the morning after the night of, right? That's right. And then you're like, what the? Uh? <laughs> Matter of fact, that's why the fallen state was allowed to happen, so that men and women could be in that fallen state to come together emotionally, get married, make all the babies that they want to make, and then cut out the sex so that order can come back together. That's the purpose of it. But when these guys wake up before they get married, I have a friend, good friend, he can't even get married. He meet a lot of women, but he can't marry because he see right away what's going on. Uh, so what you gonna do? I don't know. I have, I have no desire to date. I have no desire to be with anyone. Like uh, to be honest, I just want to make sure my daughter's uh, taken care of. That's about it. And how are you gonna do that? I just just started working out here on the uh, West Coast, so I figured I'd just stay out here and. You know, oh, you gonna stay out here? Yeah. So you ran away? Well, no. I, my, my job moved me out here. I was forced to, to come out here. So. Oh, so your way out was your job moved you to L.A. Well, no, I, I have no fortunate. problem. No, no, I have no, I have no problem confronting her. I've done it a million times. I'll, yeah. I'll tell her exactly what's on my mind. But it's just I have this struggle between having these, you know, Christian values where you want to have two parents raise a child, you want to have a family, you want to see everything through to the end. But at the same time, you have this one component, her, that just doesn't have those same values. So I'm just in a struggle like that. Should I just get married uh, to this angry person to hope things uh, get better later on, just to have a family, or, or just split up completely and hope everything turns out well for the future that way? Are you know. asking me that, or are you, are you well, wondering that? No, that's, that's that? my in internal oh, okay. struggle, right? That's I totally I understand, man. Yeah. Especially when the child is there, because men love their children, yeah. fathers love their children, and it's hard to just walk away from your child, and I don't think most women realize how much. When they find out you love your kid, it's over. That's yeah. That They're gonna use that that child to really control you. Yep. Um, Mark, want to respond to that, and then I will. Yep. I think it's pretty common that Satan talks to us like that. They're like, "Here are your two options: you can a stay with this person who's very angry and marry them and have a terrible life." Or you can be, go off on your own and leave your daughter. And there are no other options on the menu. Yeah. That's not true. You know, you can do whatever you want. Those thoughts aren't real. So what do you think he should do? He should um, talk to the baby mama. I mean, first thing, like today, move Damn. out. Like, immediately. And that will change things. Talk to the baby mama. Don't judge her. Treat her like anyone else. And the sky's the limit. Amazing. Sure, I want to respond to that. What should he do? He's fortunate in that his job got him out of there. He's in California. She's in New York. That's a nice distance. That's like from hell to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so what should he do? I don't know. I liked, I liked um, what Mark said that, you know, sometimes we only think we have these options. But... I would say um, just keep doing the silent prayer and just do what's in front of you. And like Jesse said, God loves you and it will work out. And just try to, you know, you want to see your daughter and stuff, so you have to stay in contact. You have to. But as far as your girlfriend or your baby mom is concerned, just, I would just say um, just keep doing the silent prayer and you'll, it'll work out. You'll see what to do. That's an amazing response. You're absolutely right. If you don't know what to do, do nothing. Really, just go to Word, do the silent prayer, and God will guide you. Because that happened to me, too. I made a baby out of wedlock, and when he was like three or four, he came to live with me. We were going to get married, but her mother made her marry someone else before I can get the job and get the apartment and send back for her in Alabama. And because in Alabama, it was an embarrassment to have children out of wedlock. And uh, so when he was born, he came to live with me, and it was going very well, man. Me and my son and I was like tight. And um, 
she begged me to let him come to New York to stay with her. Let him visit this summer. I promise you I'll send him back. When a woman promises you something, just know it ain't going to happen. All right? And so uh, she finally, but something told me, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, right? And so I let him go to visit, and he never came back. And she started having all these excuses, and one thing led to another one. And so I got a lawyer and out here, but he tried, but because he lived in California, he couldn't really do anything. And then she lied and said she changed his last name to her husband's last name. We found out years later that wasn't true. But what happened was it hurt so bad to lose him like that, but I gave up. I just realized, you know what, I can't do anything about this. They have no control. Of and so I let it go, and that's when things start to work out. In life, you cannot force it to happen. If, it, if you got to force it to happen, it's too important to you. I don't care if it's your child, whatever, right? You have to let it go because in that father state, we do crazy things. We don't see what we're getting into. And unfortunately, children are, are made in those situations. And if you fight with it, it's just going to make it, it's going to be bad for, for the child anyway, but it'll get worse. So I would just let it go. I would, as Cheryl said, I wanted to guy said, I will apologize to the lady for being weak and not doing it the right way. Hey, I was wrong. I should have married you. We should have dated. I should have married and things would be better. And then I would just drop it. And once you start working and get established, you can try to bring him to visit. It. And if she let it happen, fine. If she doesn't, fine. But you got to let it go. Yeah, right. And let God's will be done. I never even thought about using those two thoughts, as Mark said. So what now? I never thought about using those two thoughts in my silent prayer, even thinking as, you know, those aren't even legitimate, you know, choices. They're just something that I happen to be thinking about in the moment. So. Yeah. Yeah. Let it go, man. Yeah. I mean, will she let the child come see you? I don't see why not. I... We'll see what happens when you're ready for it. Okay. And just deal with what happened. But don't let it be so important to you that you trip out over it. Yeah. And don't move yeah. to Florida with her. No, I'm not. I... For some reason, all the, the women are moving to Florida. I don't, must be the water or something. Who's going to Florida? When they call my show, oh no, they move to Florida. <laughs> I think yeah. it's the weather or something. Yeah, probably. But yeah, just relax and do the silent prayer, and and know that whatever is happening, because I had to accept that it was my fault, even though she was wrong. I had no business getting to doing that. I had no business having sex out of wetlock. I had no business making babies out of making a baby out of wetlock. So I really get it what I deserved, without having to blame anybody else. And that's the beginning of your freedom, because that is admitting that you have sinned, you were wrong. Yeah. All right? So just relax. Cool. All right? Um, Cheryl, did I see your hand again? I just have a Oh, and then James. And then I got to ask my biblical question. Yes. When, when uh, she wouldn't send your son back, did you resent her? Yeah. Like, not going, no. I call her all kind of names. I didn't know better then, right? <laughs> But I call her everything but a child of God. <laughs> I went to visit him, and I would have to sneak over there to see him when she was not home. Right? Because I had a cousin who was close to them as well, and she would set it up so I could see him without the mother being around. Otherwise, she would not have allowed me to see him. Isn't that awful? Punish the children like that. That's evil. But that's what happened in that fallen state. Yes? How did your son grow up? Like, his feelings towards you hated and the me. mother. He hated me because she had told him I didn't want him, even though I sent money and everything. He didn't love you. He didn't want you, right? And it wasn't until he turned 18 and came out on his own, he started finding out the real truth. And it still took him a while to overcome it. He only started to overcome once he started, he started living with some women and he started seeing what was happening. Because they made a baby and the same thing happened. And all of a sudden he woke up, right? And then now things are really fine. He's married, he has his So own since he woke up, how was his feelings towards his mother? Oh, he knew not to hate her. She's dead now. Oh. She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> He knew not to hate her because he understood what anger had done with us, right? 
and that kept him from loving me in the right way. And so when he came out here, he hated everything I liked. If I liked California, he hated it. If I liked Kenny Yams, he hated it. He was like a mess. He was so bad, I had to put him out. He was so angry. And he used my telephone to make launches and calls on. You don't use my telephone. Because I warned everybody that come to visit, don't make launches and call on my phone. Call, right? You can use it one time. Because that time they didn't have cell. They were so popular. And so he kept calling launches. And I'm like, look, I'm warning you. And he did it anyway. So one day I said, you got to go. He's like, well, I'm going. I'm in California. I don't know anybody. I don't care. I did what my grandmother did. I don't care, but you leave it here. And I put him out. And he thanked me later for that because it caused him to start examining what he was doing. So you guys have like a really good relationship? We're tight now, yeah. yeah. I'm sick of him now. What? He called too much now. <laughs> he want me to come visit, come see the kids. I'm not into all that. <laughs> And then mama dead. As long as I know the kids are fine, I'm fine. I don't have to go see them. You know, like, let them come out here. Uh, so, but no, we're really tight now. And he works for the airline, so he travels a lot. And when the phone rings, I'm thinking that he's here at the airport somewhere, right? And I don't want to answer the phone. Because <laughs> I don't have time to hang out. But we're tight. Yeah. I don't let it be in the public. I don't bring him on the show and all that because of all the threats I get. And I don't want to put his family at risk. Yeah. So that's why I don't really show. I have a great grandson that, you know, I just kind of keep them private. But we're close. Um, anybody? Oh, yes, James. Um, was Nothing Real asks, when you do this silent prayer, can you do it while listening? Oh, he says, whilst listening to calming music. What? Can you do the silent prayer while listening to calm music? I don't know. I wouldn't try that, but try to see. All right. I mean, when you, when you are aware, you, you are aware of the noise around you and everything, and you're just not irritated by it. It doesn't bother you, right? But when you're unaware, it's when the noise bothers you and all that. So if you want to do it that way, that's fine. But if you start to be irritated by it, I wouldn't do it. And then one person, Kanan McGee, says the reason a lot of women move to Florida is because that state favors the mother. In the case of unwed parents, Florida law designates the mother as the natural custodian of a minor child, according to him. Really? Yeah. That's why they moved to Florida. Thanks for telling me. I'll tell the guys that on the show. I'll go. I'll look it up and verify. Okay, we'll verify. It. All right, cool. Anybody else? Yes, sir. This is this your first time? No, I've been here a few times. Oh, okay. Times. Um, I wanted to ask you about the Word of God. Uh, like my grandma's church, they're some pretty big Bible thumpers. I've been getting into this conversation with them that because um, it seems to me that like they really try to push it on you like the Bible is the Word of God. Yeah. Like, it's real <clears throat> truth, truth, truth. I'm like, no, like Jesus is the Word, it seems like. And... Um, is somebody snoring? The baby snoring? Is she drunk? <laughs> she snoring like her daddy? Oh, amazing. Alpha, alpha girl. Can you hear that on the mic? Ask Billy, can he hear that on And let me know. Okay, go ahead. All right, so, um, they they say like the Bible like is the word, um, but like even in the Bible and like John or something it says like in the beginning like the word was with God and then the word w like was made flesh. So it was never like this book that they're trying to say. Right. You know. So yeah. I just want to get your thoughts on that. The yeah. one thing for sure, the word of God is inside your heart. God is inside of you, the Holy Spirit and Christ. Jesus Christ is there, right? And it's that that guides you once you enter into the kingdom of heaven within. And the map of that is the Bible. It tells you where to look for. It's just a road map. It would be as though Kent wrote me an instruction guide and said, hey, Jesse, this is how you get to where you want to go, right? But instead of following the map, I make his book into my guide, like I'm already there, right? It's inside of us. That's why people are not guided by 
the words of God from within because they believe it's in the book. And so they're learning it intellectually, but they have no idea what it means to be that. And They've been taught that. That um, kind of like was tying into your biblical question from like a couple or a month ago or something was Christ created. And like, um, I don't know, like I've just been thinking about that ever since. I still don't know for sure because it seems like the word or something, it's like that was always there, but like the flesh was that created? I'm still just kind of kind of pondering that. Let me know who you know. All right. All right. I'm not going to answer. It's dying for me to answer it. Yeah. It's such an important question. You need to know. I really want you to know because I'm black and I'm slow, right? But yeah, he works through me to know all this, right? And likewise, you guys all have degrees. You're smarter. So he'll work through you. You need to know for yourself that you know that you know. Right. And once you know, you can't be deceived by the world. Really. You're really smarter than the people in the world. They're dumb. Yeah. With the degrees, they have no sense. Oh, I know. Look how they're crazy. fighting amongst each other. Look how they put kids on medication because the kids are active. What kind of sense does that make? Right? So just I'm glad you were wondering about it. It'll come to you. Yeah. All right? All right. Okay. Uh, right here, I think I thought I seen another hand, Frank, but right here. Then I got to get to the biblical question. Uh, Is Francisco here? Okay, I want to ask him. That's okay. what I was going to say. Was this, the biblical question was, are you a lamb or a cadabra, right? Uh, no. No? Uh -uh. I thought that's what it was. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cadabra, <laughs> cadabra or a lamb. Get it right. Well, uh, well I think your lane. I relate to, you know how you say suffer so and the die? the biblical question was, are you a um, a cadaver, cadaver, or a lamb, and you say <laughs> a scuba diver. <laughs> no, uh, I, I think about when you say suffer and die, right? Yeah. And and I relate it to you know you suffer. I suffered for a long time, and and I feel like the goal is to die. Your old self dies so that you could be reborn. You know, you live to die and then you be born. Okay. So I. I at first, I thought, you know, maybe I'm a lamb, you know, because there's wolves, and, you know, I'm not a wolf. We have another lamb in the house. Where's that lamb? Oh, there he is. <laughs> but, Why are uh, laughing? They're laughing at you, and you're a lamb. <laughs> <laughs> but I think so I, are you a, a, a cadaver? Cadaver, I would or say. Or a lamb? Cadaver. Because you believe you are a cadaver? I don't know. Why? I don't know if I be believe, cadaver. believe cadaver. I am or... But Which I just, one are you, a cadaver or a lamb? I would say cadaver. Cadabra. Cadabra. He's been hanging around black people. He reminds me of James. <laughs> yeah. Would James get ready to go in the studio and do his show or do the news? Well, I guess I get on in here. Just a black. He's been hanging around black people. Because the thoughts tell me. Like, so Whoa. you say you a cadaver? Yeah, well, it's okay. hard for me to conclude what I am because, I mean, I'm just trying to be an observer and not have an opinion like you said. But I, I relate it to it as, a, as the old me dying because isn't a cadaver like a corpse or a body, dead body? You're not allowed to ask right now Okay. because I want to get some input. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So okay. I want Because I want people to think about that, this. I am going to deal with this. Yeah, though. Yeah. Are you a cadaver or a lamb? I'd say cadaver. Cadaver. Did you finish high school? <laughs> Barely. I'm white and slow. <laughs> and so you say you're a cadaver? Yeah. All right. What do you say, Kent? Are you a cadaver or a lamb? Is this from how long ago was this question? Is this, this, this week? week? Yeah. It's this week's question. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You don't know? Yeah. Okay, that's an honest answer. How about you, uh, Esteban, I want you to hear Esteban so he won't say it. I didn't, he didn't say it. Are you a cadaver or a lamb? I'm a lamb. <laughs> Ooh. Uh -huh. You could have fooled Cheryl. No. no. What is the, why do you say you're a lamb? I feel like I was dead before. Like when I was like angry and, you know, and had all that nasty stuff inside of me. But now that it's leaving, I feel like... Uh, Alive, you know, and there's like a natural like flow of life. So I feel like a, 
I guess like Jesus felt, you know, like how he said you're going to feel like alive and you're going to have a connection with the with God, you know, the Father. So that's kind of how I feel. Oh, okay. How about you, Hermes? Are you a cadaver or a lamb? You know, I didn't really understand the question before, but I agree with Esteban. About what? That's deep, Esteban. About what? <laughs> his definition of it. So I didn't really understand the question before. Huh? What was his definition that of it? That when the old nature dies, then you, you know, you feel like a lamb because it's like that new spirit. So your old nature is dead? It's dying. Dying. So yeah. you're like half cadaver? Cadaver and half lamb? I, like I said, I didn't understand the question. You try to be funny. I, uh, <laughs> no, <not. laughs> I didn't really understand the question before, so I don't. And so really, today you are a. I'm not really sure. I don't know. Oh, you're not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. But Esteban, I thought you agreed. He's I, a lamb. No, I like. It made sense. I mean, the way he explained it. And so, what are you? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. It just made sense, but you're not yeah. sure. We okay. Yeah. I got you, Francisco. And then this young lady, she's dying to answer that. Are you a cadaver or a lamb? I'd say I'm half and half. <laughs> oh. Don't let the world hear that. Yeah. So you're a half cadaver and a half lamb? Yeah. Okay. And why do you say that? The things in the world that I'm attached to, the, you know, likes and desires. and. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you aware that you're attached to them? Yep, my eyes are open. And why not overcome it then? Why not let it go? I am. I am overcoming it. You am what? I'm overcoming it, you know, uh, oh, chocolate okay. cake and, you know, the passions and... Cake? Yeah. Did you say cake? You don't like cake? Oh, okay. You know, you give up all your passions and all your, you know, desires. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Nick, how about you? I'm a little lamb. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's my producer. He's a lamb. And why do you say that? Um, because, uh, because I'm living a new life. I really am. I'm, I'm living like a fresh new life. And uh, whenever I think that I'm a cadaver, that I've been deceived. Yeah. And so there's all these things that I'm letting go. And, the only, and I only think that I'm holding on to them. But when I re realize it, I actually look back on my life and I'm like, wow, I'm living a completely new life. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, so you're a lamb. Yeah, a little lamb. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Are you a, is this your first time? Uh, yeah. It's oh, good. Welcome. Thank you. How did you find us? YouTube. Right on. Any questions or disagreements about anything? Uh, quick question. Why do you think the previous generation really gave up? <clears throat> That's a good question. I think they fell for the lie. I think white people <laughs> believed the lie that they were racist, mm -hmm. and then they saw other white people being attacked. There was this uh, guy that owned a baseball team or something. Mm -hmm. What was that guy's name? Remember that guy, James? Donald Sterling? Yeah, remember him? Basketball. 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 It was a basketball. They took his whole team away from him. They accused him of being a racist, and so he was set up as an example to white people that if you disagree, or you say something bad about the blacks, or you do this, then you're racist, and here's your punishment. And I think by seeing that example, and examples like that, a lot of white people shut down. And then it seemed that a lot of the older black people believed into the lie that racism exists, even though while growing up, they never heard it before. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why they didn't pass down wisdom to the next generation. They believed into the lies. Do you think that started with the baby boomers or, or even before that? Um, it started when the whole women's movement started. Okay. When they started fighting for freedom and they wanted the same thing men want, you know, the nationalization of women who hate men, it started to go downhill when the men caved into that. And, and the radical homosexuals and all of them. It started then. To, it seemed as though that my generation backed away. Okay. And now they're in hiding. I never see them anywhere. Because I noticed when I was growing up, fathers would protect their children. Mm -hmm. All races are fathers. But white people, white fathers and mothers stopped protecting their kids. And they would send them to these schools. They would live in these communities knowing that the kids were going through all the hell. But they just allowed it to happen trying to get along, I think. 
That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. And so any other, any other questions for anything or disagreements? Uh, how do you think people can really overcome that? Overcome what? Weaknesses. By admitting that they are weak. Mm -hmm. Stop playing God, meaning don't hate yourself, don't hate others, speak up, and know that it's wrong to judge, to play mm -hmm. God. Okay. Once you can see that anger is wrong, you're playing God, your life will start to change. Get to know yourself. And yes, bad things happen, right? Yeah. But you don't have a right to hate the people for the bad thing. Don't mm -hmm. accept it, but just don't hate. And you will overcome. And you can't help but overcome. Because God loves you. He'll draw you into the kingdom, mm -hmm. and your whole life will start to change. And finally, you will be yourself. Because anyone who has anger is not themselves. They're whomever caused them to become angry. Mm -hmm. They're not themselves. Okay. Have you overcome your anger? Uh, uh, not for real. Right. So, some, yes, some, uh, no. I mean, no. No. And why not? Um... I guess I didn't don't really didn't really know how to overcome it. Sometimes I can handle things. Sometimes I, you know, have weak moments. Right. Yeah. Um, did you go and forgive your parents? Have you heard me say that on the show so far? I have heard you say that before. And have I, you gone and done that? No. Why not? Um. Well, I, for with my parents, with them personally, I don't feel anger because I know they've done what they could. Let them know that. Hey, I realize now you did what the best you can do. I'm sorry for holding anything against you. Yeah. Can't you let them know that? That's forgiveness. I can do that. Well, do that. At least you are, you are letting go because I'm sure they made you angry, irritated you at time growing up, right? Mm -hmm. But at that time, you didn't realize they were doing their best. That's all they had. Yeah. So you should tell them that. That is forgiveness. I'm sorry for holding it. I realize now you guys were just crazy and couldn't help it. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. Are you afraid to do it? i nervous. Yeah, and why? Yeah. Um, you know, I honestly don't know why I feel nervous. Well, get to know yourself. Pay attention to yourself. You will see. But once you go and forgive them, don't ask for forgiveness. Forgive and God will forgive you. You will never know fear again. Mm -hmm. It will not be a part of your nature because you operate from perfect love. Mm -hmm. And you will never have fear, doubt, worry about anything. Mm -hmm. That make sense? Yeah. So go and forgive them. Do you see the little things that irritate you about? Where, mm -hmm. they, where do they live? Uh, in San Diego. And where do you live? Burbank. Oh, good. Well, forgive them. Are you married? Yes. And how is that going? Uh, going well. Just recently got married about a few back in October. Oh, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Amazing. <laughs> and so you, you, you have any kids? No. Oh, good. Uh, is your husband beta or alpha? Beta. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, beta. It can be both, I guess. You so. can't be both. Yeah. You can't serve two gods, only one or the other. He is going, unfortunately, going through an illness right now. So it, sometimes that can be hard. He has an illness? Yes. What's wrong with him? Uh, he has this pain all over his body that the doctors can't even find. And did he have it before you married him? He did. He's and been you suffering. still married him? Still married him. And why? Because we, we've gotten along. We have the same values. Uh, we've been together for about uh, 10 years. Oh, you were living with him all the time? No, I was not. Oh, you just dating? We were just dating. Oh, okay. Yes. And so you married him because you loved him and knowing that he had that illness? He's, he's a good guy, and I loved him even knowing that he did have the illness. Oh. 
when I find, if I meet a woman and I find out she's already sick, I ain't married her. <laughs> ain't that much love in the world. No, I'm kidding. Any, so, so you guys get along and everything? Yes, we do. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. Are you doing the silent prayer? No. Why not? This is like... I'm sorry? One of the first I've heard about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. On my YouTube channel is a silent prayer dot video. Mm -hmm. And I encourage you to do it because, especially dealing with your husband being ill, mm -hmm. uh, it will separate the real you from the not you. You are not your thoughts. Yeah. You don't create thoughts. They're not from God, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll make you think and feel a certain way going through this, and you won't see how to help him in the right way. But if you stay out of your imagination, you will see the perfect way to help your husband. Mm -hmm. All right? And tell him to do it, too. Okay. So that he doesn't take on the pain in the wrong manner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially since in anything, healing is possible in the present. Everything is possible right then and there. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. Any other questions for me or anything? Uh, no. And so are you a cadaver, a cadaver mm -hmm. or a lamb? I actually don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right on. Uh, Victoria is dying to answer this. She's like, yeah, I hope he come to me. Victoria, you got the last word. Cadaver or a lamb? I was very confused, but I'm a lamb. You're a lamb. And, and why do you say that? Uh, okay. I looked up the definition. A lamb is a baby sheep, and sheep have shepherds, which means they understand that they do not run their lives. They understand that they have a master. Um, <clears throat> for me, I consider myself a lamb who probably used to be a cadaver because cadavers are dead bodies that are open for observation, which means they didn't get it, and that's why they're dead. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So, I'm learning to take direction. Oh, and that that's is what. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's what made me realize I am I am a lamb. Right on. Yeah. Um, just two other people I gotta ask. Oh, okay. These two people right here. Right here first, and then there, and then I'll, I'll come to you. Are you a cadaver or a lamb? I'm a lamb. Lamb. And why do you say that? Well, I was very confused by this question. Yeah. But um, cadavers are soulless bodies. They have no spirit. The spirit is gone, so it's just a dead thing. A lamb, I think of as like the most innocent, um, you know, small little cute animal. <laughs> and <laughs> um, I think that they don't have rational thought so they kind of just live and do whatever okay. is right in front of them and they were just they are guided um by they're just beings okay. so they're not like you know trying to control things or um think that they can be their own god or anything so i think that um to aspire to be like a lamb is like to be just a child of God. All right, I appreciate that. Yes, uh, let's ask him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you a cadaver or a lamb? We already know. That what I am? Uh-huh. You already know? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Are you a cadaver or a lamb? Uh, I'm a lamb, I would, I would say for sure. Like, uh-uh. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. No, I'm a, why I'm you a, say that? Uh, because... I feel like uh, like la like lambs are really stupid, you know. They're just like really stupid animals that need to be guided. So you were right when you were saying he was really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> no. So like, so but I feel like when you when you have the you know when they're when they have a shepherd, they the shepherd's like a, a genius in a way, you know, because he can he can herd a whole, you know, like a swarm of of lambs. You know, I never heard uh, put I, that I, way. I, I, what, okay. I don't know what you call them. Yeah, a swarm or a, a you know, a herd. Yeah, a flock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the flock is birds, right? A herd. Yeah. So. Okay. So, anyways, yeah, lamb. And then, uh, um, and I feel like when I connect with God, He's so intelligent that I just, you just follow Him. Okay. But I'm no longer dead anymore. So. Amazing. That's that's how I see it. Okay. You have your hand. Yeah. Yes. So regarding that question, um, 
Well, are you a cadaver or a lamb? A lamb. Uh, yeah. You have a lot of lambs up in but, here. Because huh? I was thinking it more in a way of like, I didn't understand the question at all. I was so confused and I was like, I don't right. understand that. But thinking about, I think I, I don't know, because I don't know, like for sure, I might be wrong, but I don't know for sure, like the parables of the, or like the, the stories of the Bible and stuff. Right. There was a story, I think, maybe not, maybe it's in my, in my imagination, um, that where Jesus was like with lambs, right? And then he was guiding them or something like that. So I felt like um, being like a lamb, it's a good attribute. It's a good beginning to like to do. But at the same time, I'm thinking there are lambs that are guided because they're so like no, you know, like they 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 can be guided to to their death too. You know, like they can also be guided to uh, like a bad leader, and yeah. that bad leader can lead them to death and for them to die and being cooked or whatever. Um, so I was, I was like, okay, yeah, it is good that I begin there in, as being as a lamb and have the understanding to like at, at, at least being like, okay, like I need to be obedient, um, but who am I obedient to, to right? Because me as a woman, um, it, we should be obedient, right? But then I'm to thinking who? to our men, our husband, right? If you marry, yes. Yeah. Other than that, to God. To God, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, okay. Um, <clears throat> So that's the, that I also want to make sure before getting into marriage too, that I'm, that I'm going to, the person that I choose, I will be, I, it will be trust, I will trust him and I see him, his connection with God so where I can be obedient in, to the oh, right okay. person and I don't go somewhere where I can, it lead me to my death. So you are a lamb. Yeah, but I'm just curious of how okay, further it goes. Okay, I'll write you down as a lamb. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, one more lamb. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, I think I'm a cadaver. I think we're all cadavers. You, and, uh, you are a cadaver. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and why do you say that? <clears throat> uh, I I don't think we're alive until Christ comes to collect us from our graves during the uh, revelation, during the tribulation. Christ is the lamb. Christ is the Lamb of God. So that's, that's the way I see it. Oh, okay. Amazing. Uh, a cadaver. All right. Frankie, you had your hand real fast. So Thank you, man. You can't help but think about the verse in the Bible Christ told the apostles, you know, to be, uh, to be as harmless as, uh, as a dove or a lamb and be as wise as a serpent because the world is going to take you in every dis different direction. And, and most people were the dead. He did say, you know, uh, let the dead bury the dead. So, um, and he was, he was the lamb of, you know, of Christ. So to okay. be that way. To be so you're a lamb. I have you down for a lamb, right? No, you got me for. Oh, you're a cadaver. I got a foot in both Oh, you both. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> Amazing, huh? Going to hell. <laughs> Um, take that back. <laughs> James, did I ever ask you yeah. the hate report? Where were you? Yeah, you asked me. What did you say? Cadaver. Oh. Yeah. I thought you were like Jesus. Mm-mm. Remember, was he like Jesus with one of those questions? <laughs> huh? That's a different one. Oh, I asked what was a Christian, right? And he said, like Jesus. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Like Christ. <laughs> Ooh, and now you're a cadaver. Correct. Amazing. So you still like Christ? He's dead or something? Uh-uh. Amazing. <laughs> That's a hate report. Yes. So in my mind, a uh, lamb, like uh, Victoria was saying, is they follow somebody, right? They follow the shepherd. Right. So um, you have to be able to discern whether your shepherd is going to lead you to a pack of wolves or not, right? So I don't think being a lamb is necessarily a good thing either. So uh, I are you a cadaver? That. Cadaver, that doesn't make sense either because then you're just dead. You're just like a zombie, you know what I mean? But if you're born so maybe again. Maybe you want to be both like those guys. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd be leaning more towards that for sure. Oh, okay. So you're both? Yeah, I would say. You're a lamb, a cadaver, uh, and a lamb. Yeah. Ooh. You know. Did you know you were sitting next to both? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I appreciate that, man. Any Is this your first time? No, I've been here before. Oh, okay. So at least these, yes, sir. At least these questions are making you think, and that's all I want. I want you to like, wow, I'd like to know. Let me examine myself. 
It's talking about, yes. So biblically speaking, a lamb is an analogy used for Christ, like he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. So uh, that's one thing that came to my mind when people were talking right here. And then another thing was, uh, my sheep know my voice. And so if you are a sheep, like, yeah, you are unaware, but you have the good shepherd who's guiding you to where you ought to go. And so you are a lamb, cadaver or yes, a lamb? I'm a lamb. You're a lamb. All right. Lamb meat is good. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I asked this, I was reading, in, uh, and I wrote it down, in Revelation 5 and also Hebrew. I was just kind of reading it. It's okay to read the Bible sometimes, right? But just don't hold on to what you read. It don't come, because Satan will interpret it for you, and you won't know the real meaning to it. Um, Ed, I didn't ask you. You cursing this morning in the, in the lobby. You know, I was wondering if you were going to come around to me. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> a, a cadaver I don't, or a lamb? I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm waking up in the morgue. In the morgue? <laughs> yeah. Well, you did. <laughs> All of a sudden I go, what is this toe tag? Don't let your girlfriend know. She may stop by and talk to you. Yeah, what, what is this toe tag doing on me here? Uh, so, I'm, <laughs> I, that's kind of how I feel. So you're a cadaver? I guess so. And so, amazing. I'm not surprised. <laughs> so, again, I'll read Revelation 5 and um, Hebrew 12. Just happened to open the book, really. And in one of those uh, books they were talking about, the, they saw they were in this city called Judah. And there was this Samaritan that came in the gate, and, and that Samaritan had a lamb with him, right? And so Christ asked the disciples, what, 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 what are they going to do with the lamb? And uh, you know what a Samaritan is, right? Because I had to look that up. Who don't know what, what is a Samaritan? Well, I think it's, well, we refer to like a, a place or a, ge a geographic location, but people use it now like a good, good Samaritan, someone who does the right thing. I think that's what it meant then, right? That's what, what did it mean then? Back then, what? Uh huh. You may be on the money. I had to look it up too, because I thought it meant a good person. Right. I, I think a good Samaritan is ironic, uh, because the Samaritans were looked at as like uh, terrible people back then. Oh yeah. They were, I guess, a common enemy of of the people of like uh, Israel. Wow, y'all better let the Christians know, because I always thought I was taught that Samaritan meant a good person. Yeah, and I was running around trying to be one. <laughs> oh, and who was that? The good Samaritan. Oh. <laughs> that's why he was so, so unusual. Yeah. So, oh, that's why? Oh, where is he now? Uh, he did. I rest my case, right? So this uh, Samaritan came in with a lamb. And so Christ asked the disciples, what, will he, what is he going to do with the, the uh, lamb? And they told him, well, he's going to kill the lamb and eat it. And then Christ responded by saying, and I wrote it down too, so I don't forget it. Um, Christ said uh, to the disciple, what will he, this man do with the lamb? And they said he will kill it and eat it. Then he told them, so as long as it is alive, he would not, they would not eat it. As long as the lamb is alive, they, they won't eat it. But only if he is killed, and it's only at that time that they can eat it. It become a cadaver. Once they kill it, and then they can eat it, right? And so the, the more to the story is that a lamb represents love. A lamb represents innocence. A lamb represents power. A lamb represents God, right? And so once they kill the lamb, it becomes a cadaver, and that's what they do. They eat you. So what happens is once your heart is hardened, you become angry, you become resentful, you become judgmental, you become a cadaver, and that's when the world can eat you. But as long as you have a pure heart, as long as you have perfect love, and you don't hate and all that crap, you are alive, you are a lamb, and they cannot eat you. And so what God 
recommend is that you stay in that quiet place. Find that quiet place which is right within, right? Stay in that quiet place so that you don't become a cadaver, so that they can't cause you to hate. They can't cause you to, be, uh, to kill you. They can't kill you if you're alive. And if you notice in the homes, in the schools, in the places of the world, they kill you by causing you to become immoral, by causing you to become hateful. And once they got you that way, they can make you do anything. They eat you alive. They make you vote in the wrong way. They can make you believe lies. They can make you hate your neighbors and all that. But they cannot do that as long as you don't have that cold-hearted heart. So you got to come into the present so you can, as this young man was saying from New York, you got to be present in those situations so that you won't become a cadaver. You won't be made to have a hard heart. And so that's what it means. Uh, that's why I asked. I'm like, oh, that's a good question. Are you a cadaver or are you a lamb? And anyone, anybody who has anger in his heart or her heart is a cadaver. You're not a lamb. And you can be easily manipulated and controlled because you don't have that power. You don't have that love. You're not innocent. And these people, if you notice, they destroy innocent. They destroy the kids because the kids are innocent. They brainwash the kids, tell them wrong is right. You're destroyed in the home because of your innocence. The parents are angry already, and the little kid is not holding uh, hatred toward anyone. They're just growing and watching. But the hardness of the heart of the parents don't like that, especially the mother, and she kills that. And now she can control the kids. So when the kids become adults, she can do whatever she wants with them. I'm your mother. Feel sorry for me. Your father was no good. And because she heartened your heart and killed you, you're subject to her. So you got to overcome the anger by staying in that quiet place. Isn't that amazing? Oh, amazing. Anybody, any questions about that? That makes sense? Did that, did that occur to anyone? It, it did? Okay. Victoria did? I heard a guy say, oh, uh -huh, too. Yes, Victoria. No, I was just going to say that, yeah, that it occurred to me this week. And I actually wanted to share something with you. I'll be oh. brief about it. Okay. Um, I remember that I told you I forgave my mom like a year ago, but I was still holding a lot of anger and um, wasn't sure why. So whether that was Satan or not, all I know is I was very angry still. And through the help of like one of the guys here, I was able to face my mom. Like I literally had two chances in her face and we don't live in the same place. But the first time I was extremely afraid. So that was how I knew the anger was still there yeah. because I couldn't, I couldn't even look at her. I was petrified. So I wasn't sure what I did the first time <laughs> or what I thought I was doing the first time. Um, but it wasn't forgiveness for sure. So long story short, this past week, um, because, you know, I knew inside that I needed to do it, but also because there was someone there to keep pushing me, like every day, like, did you do it? Did you do it? Did you do it? And I got to the point where I was like, okay, I don't want to keep saying no, because I need to do this. Right. And other things happened this week that really led me to the, the conclusion that I had to do it. So I went to her. And I had already told her, like, you know, I want to talk to you. And there was just one last thing I needed to say that very first time we spoke. And I owe you that. So I knew by saying that, obviously, she would already know I'm coming in peace. For right. Sure. So um, during this conversation, I was able to say so many things to her that I was deathly afraid to say the first time I went to her. Absolutely. And I told her, whether you want it or not, I forgive you for the things that you did because just a lot of things I said to her and the responses that she had at first were kind of defensive but I could see through it and I knew she was just doing that because she didn't like she just wasn't ready to right. let it go but something came over her when I told her I don't judge you like you I want you to know I don't resent you for anything you did because you were a person before I got here. I don't know what your eyes saw. I don't know why you made the decisions that you made. All I can do is tell you that it affected me in a certain way, and here we are today. 
my life is being put on hold because I'm holding this against you and I'm ready to live. So I have to let this go. And you are the one person that I keep coming back to yes. for the forgiveness thing. Um, so it went really well and I was blown away. So yeah, I just wanted to like, thank you for one, opening my eyes to that. Uh, oh God, I feel nervous talking about this, but I want to thank you for opening my eyes to it. And then also with whatever it is that you're doing, like with the guys here, particularly, thank you for that. Because it's, I can see that they're starting to see when they need to step up and say things or yeah. help people. And I probably wouldn't have done it like <laughs> if this person didn't keep like persisting. That's amazing. Yeah, that's and, it, nice. and, and that's why I said I'm a lamb because at the end of the day, Normally, I would have resisted that, and but it was like, no, I can see this now. Right on. I see it. So. Well, yeah. the uh, cadaver of the lamb is the hardness of the heart. All right, because you you guys are all close to that, but the lamb is like of love. Mm -hmm. The lamb is free, as you were saying. The lamb just live, and he just live right, and deal with stuff. It's not personal, and just be. But when your heart is, is heartened with anger, judgment, resentment, all the same, you're a cadaver. You can't just live. Yeah. And I could see that um, in my mom while I was talking to her. And normally, that would make me angry. And yeah. I would tell her what I see, like in a negative way. But as she was talking, like you said, it is like watching a movie because... Yes. The thing she was saying, it was very clear that she's still very angry. And I told her, you know, my only promise to her is to come to her out of love. If there's ever something she says or does that I find affects me, I'm going to come to her. Right on. And I'm going to explain it. And I asked her to do the same for me. I said, you know, Mom, this is the one thing that I ask of you out of anything in the world. I don't want apologies, nothing. I just want you to come to me in love if you are affected by something that well, I what's do. What's going to happen is now you're going to grow and it, it won't matter. Mm -hmm. You won't need her to come to you. If she says something to you to try to hurt you, or, you know, if it, it won't even bother you. Mm -hmm. You just understand that she can't help it yeah. and you won't take it personally. Yes. You really, you'll just be open uh, yeah. to live. Okay, I have one last question. Yes. I mean, I'm done. <laughs> okay, so I understand that um, there is a the forgiveness that needs to take place with my father. Yes. However, I don't feel, I have never felt like anger towards my father. Yeah. And That's I wanted the same to, with me. yeah, and I wanted to explore that more, or I don't even know if I need to explore it because I do want my father to know that I don't resent him. Yes. Um, cause I don't know what he thinks or what he feels, but I want him to know that I hold no resentment in my heart because in talking to my mom, she kept wanting to put it on my dad, and I, just, I said, no, Mom, I grew up with you. Yeah. This was all you're doing. Amazing. My dad wasn't there to affect me, so it I wasn't I realized him. that over the years that mm -hmm. most kids, adults and young, do not resent their fathers. Mm -hmm. They resent their father with their mother's resentment, and once they deal with their mother, they realize, wow, I don't resent my father, so there's mm -hmm. nothing to forgive. You're absolutely right. So but the father may think that, so it would be good to let him know. That's what I wanted to know, because I thought when I, when I, I know I'm not supposed to think ahead and doubt all thoughts and all that, but when I thought about going to him and saying, I forgive you, right? maybe not holding resentment is forgiveness, but I don't, that's it all is. I want to say. As long as you don't have it, that's right. Okay. Just say, hey, you know what, I, I just want you to know I, I don't hate you. Mm -hmm. I love you. I realized with my mother that I was resented, not you. Mm -hmm. And it'll be, it'll start a relationship with you and your father mm -hmm. in the right way. Amazing. Yeah, it was a good week. It really, really was. That's a, amazing. A great week. Wow. So, yeah. Ermis, you want to come in on, on that cadaver, what is cadaver and a lamb is now? You asked me that already. I'm sorry? You asked me that already. No, not at that. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm, uh, I don't have that hardened heart anymore. So, I'm in the, uh, I'm not going to say I'm totally a lamb. But I'm definitely a forgiveness and letting go. Yeah. yeah. So to avoid becoming one, you have to live your life, keep your life, and you want to stay free, you have to live a free life. 
You have to be open and just live a free life so that when people attack you, no big deal, right? doesn't mean there are not times to stand up, but never hate. Just open to whatever happens in life and just be and have no opinion about it. Then you will not become a cadaver. Or if you are one, let the anger go and you can become a lamb and just live a, just kind of open to the essence, you know, of life. Just let it be. And it is an amazing way to, to live. We were having uh, last, was it last night? night? Friday night after the event was over, we had a dinner together with the people that was participating and that invited us to the uh, event. And so I was sitting at the end of the table and Nick was sitting at the middle somewhere. And we got into this whole discussion about slavery and all that, right? And it was so amazing to hear some of the stuff they said. But I could hear Nick down the middle dealing with some of the black people. And you know how you're supposed to be afraid of the black? But he had no fear. He was like, just arm him. I was like, wow, that's a lamb. <laughs> and that's how you're supposed to be. You're supposed to deal with people and just don't judge them, don't hate them, and just be open. And he was open to it. If they didn't like it, it would have been fine. And that's how your life will become with all things. All things, it really will. I have a, uh, one of the guys that went through our program is now a lawyer in D.C. And I can't tell you where he worked, but he's a lawyer in D.C. And he's dealing with some really serious issues and things. And because he lived a life as a lamb, he's winning his cases. I mean, he going up against Satan children. And then he win. And he called me up like, Jesse, it was amazing. I wasn't afraid. I just laid it out. I just did my thing. And I'm telling you that because that's what's going to happen for you. Because God is with us. He just needs you to let go of Satan's nature so he can draw you into the light, into the kingdom of heaven. And you will see that he loves you. So let the anger go and become a lamb. All right? And just have an open, free life. My life is this free. I don't hold on to anything. And if I see that I am like that building I really wanted, that building down the road, and I realize it's not meant to be, I let it go, right? And that's how I encourage you to live. If you're in these relationships and they're about to break up, if it, if it looks like you need to break up, let it go. If you feel like you're going to feel, you're going to sit by the dock on the bay, or you're going to be going breaking out the windows, uh, or, or, you know, it's too important to you, let it go. Really, just let it go, and something better will come. What was meant for you will come, and it will work out. Don't let this stuff be that important. Be in the world, but not of it. All right? Did that help a little bit? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, James? Lots of super chats. I'd like to get to all of them if I can. Okay. So, um, Jan, Ronnie, Beck, Anderson. He's, he's Norwegian, so I may have been mispronouncing. Oh, okay. But he says, thank you for your amazing work. I'm 34 years old and currently away on military exercise. My fiance is at home with my son, 10 months old, blames me for her anger and resentment. What should I do? Forgive them, of course. See, when you forgive, you understand it and you will see what to do. You will always, God is not going to leave you blind to anything. You will see what to do. Christine says Antifa is getting out of control. Thoughts? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> JJ Money says today's my birthday. Love to Jesse and crew. Y'all are great. Happy birthday, JJ. Um, strong spirit woman, thanks to JL, as in Jesse Lee. I now feel such love for my father. He's dead. Thank you. He's dead. Just back from. <laughs> Just back from shooting his old Beretta. Thank you, Dad. Right on. Um, does Jesse have a Valentine? Asks Marty. What? Does Jesse have a Valentine? Does Do I have a Valentine? Right. What is a Valentine? Uh, I don't know. I must not have one then. <laughs> what? Do I have a Valentine's Day? Sweetheart, I have never had one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the father's state, I didn't have one. <laughs> I had a girlfriend, but I didn't call her Valentine. <laughs> Another super chat from Marty Uvaldo says, Good morning, Jesse. How was Arizona? And to Joelle and James, great show on Friday. Love you guys and keep up the good work. More Amazing. donations to Bond. Right on. Thank you. Mr. Bentham, how do you 
forgive someone who has passed away? By knowing yourself and realize of yourself, you could. I had a revelation this morning while locking the door to come here at the house. I'm like, wow, that makes sense. But we'll get into that later. It just kind of all came together for me. But know thyself and everything you need to know is there. That's what's so amazing about life. Yes. There's a playlist on forgiving dead parents and stuff on your channel, on the Jesse Lee Peterson channel, too. Oh, okay. Um, Carlos asks, can you do the silent prayer in church? At some point or now? It doesn't say. Oh, when. I have done it in church before. But yeah, we could do it sometime. Sneaks on Feet asks, do you believe in the law of attraction? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. Picklebear, Jesse, you're not of the world. Quattro. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're supposed to be in it, but not of it. Right. Right. Quattro Dilworth, I'm a muscular, hardcore alpha lamb. I eat cadavers for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> J-Rock, thank you. Um, Mari, will Jesse have a new biblical question for this week? I have one, as soon as you finish. Um, tax cattle, what does Revelation 3.9 mean? I don't know what that is. Jimmy Morgan, Luke 9.60, Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Luke 10.3, Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Nice. Tom Wynn says, It's okay to hate Kobe. Can we respect him for one thing? He said his biggest regret was taking care of family. His parents were mad the home he bought them was less than a million dollars. Amazing. Giving family material things cheated them out of their own dreams. And it's not okay to hate Kobe either. <laughs> and that's that. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Um, one thing that you're going to realize once you overcome that anger is that you're, not, you're going to be in the world or not of it, and you're not going to be driven by rewards and passions and things like that. You have things, but it would just be things. Things you need, a house and whatever, right? But you won't be driven by that. It's just going to naturally happen for you. So it'll change. I have a brand new biblical question. Any other question before I give it to you? Anybody disagree or have any question about anything? You do? Yeah, I have a quick question. Yes. <clears throat> With the silent prayer, like when you open your eyes, do you ever get conf kind of confused, like where you're at? No. Uh, I know exactly where I am. Uh, you get confused? Not like confused, but you just you just get up and you're like, where, like, like. No, I've not had that experience. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So my brand new biblical question. Brand new biblical question. I happen to get this from a song, right? And my biblical question, are you the sum of all of your highs and all of your lows? Are you the sum of all of your highs and all of your lows? Isn't that a good question? Right? Are you, are you the sum of all your highs and all your lows? Right here. Me? Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, I think in the end you are. How about you? Um, in, what do you mean by in the end or what? Like, I mean, uh, in totality, of course, you are the sum of all your highs and all your lows. Amazing. But um, I think as you stand as a person day by day, it's really, you, you can't, you aren't the sum of your previous lows, you know? Your, 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 your positives in that day. And uh, that's how I sort of think Oh, okay. About it. Daniel, are you the sum of all your highs and all your lows? I don't know. What? <laughs> what did you say? I didn't even hear him. I said I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Okay. All right, well, that's the biblical question uh, for this. How about you? Are you the sum of all your highs and all your lows? Yes. <laughs> I have to. I have to to pray about it. I don't know. I have to. Think you gotta pray about, about it. it. Yeah, I have to think oh, about Lord, it throughout the week. Oh Lord, I'm the sum of all my highs <laughs> and all my lows. That's how the song goes. Okay. 
You pray on it. Yeah. All right. Yes, real fast. Oh, I, would, I would say no. You're not the sum of all your highs and all your lows? Because I'm not my thoughts. Why do you I'm say not, no? Because that's the past, and I'm not who I was in the past. Maybe I was at some point the sum of all my highs and my lows, yeah. but every day I become somebody else, and I'm not defined by my past. All right. Well, I really am grateful that you, the men and women here are waking up. You have no idea. You're living. You're coming to life. and don't even, You haven't seen anything. Stay with it. Do the silent prayer. And if Satan convinces you you're angry or you're overreact, just relax. Don't. Not a big deal. Don't believe him. Just let it pass. And you just have not seen anything. And God is not bringing you back to him to let you lose out in life, right? So just be patient. <laughs> I uh, thank you all for tuning in. I do appreciate it. It's good to know that you're out there waking up. I do appreciate it. Any announcement, Hermes? Uh, no announcements. Okay. So we are getting ready for the 30-year celebration of Bond, my nonprofit. So we will have a big hoot nanny in September of this year. So you'll be getting more information about that as we move forward. I'll be back on the radio show tomorrow. We're back in town, so we'll be back on tomorrow. And thanks to James and all this guy for sitting in for us and doing a, a great job, all right? Yes. We are looking for volunteers to help with the 30th anniversary, so if you guys want to volunteer, let me know. Also, we need, we're looking for a, a graphic designer, so if you're a good graphic designer, okay, oh, talk man. to me. Yeah. Right thanks. on. No, we got talent in here, that's for sure. Also, I, I've been told to put my book in what? Audiobook. Audiobook. And so what I'm asking is that if you have a good voice and you can really read well, if you don't mind you can, and you think you want to do audio book for me, maybe read a, a chapter or two and send it to me, and we'll pick someone to do the books for us, all right? Huh? I have the perfect person. What? I have the perfect person. Oh, but send yours, and, and we'll, we'll decide. Okay. All right? So thank you all. Thank you for your support. And we're getting out early today. That's amazing. Early. Thank you. Yeah, look, normally we're here until 1, but yeah, we're on time for the first time. Thank you for your support, all right? We do appreciate it. Have a good week. Thank you all very much.